mallet finger, there will be a rupture or avulsion of the terminal extensor tendon. And the patient will not be able to actively extend the DIP joint. Injury to the distal pharynx could be an avulsion of the insertion of the flexor or the extensor tendon, and the fracture may appear small and benign. Here is a picture of a mallet finger, dorsal base fracture, and here is a picture of a jersey finger, volar base fracture. The two pictures are side by side for comparison. In mallet finger, the patient will have a dorsal base fracture. The fracture is called bony avulsion of the distal pharynx, bony mallet. In jersey finger, the patient will have a volar base fracture. In jersey finger, the patient is unable to flex the DIP joint due to involvement of the flexor digitorum profundus. Be aware of avulsion fracture at the base of the distal pharynx because it should be evaluated thoroughly. A review of anatomy, here is the distal pharynx, here is the DIP, and here is the extensor tendon terminal insertion into the base of the distal pharynx. A mallet finger is caused from a blow to the finger at the DIB joint that forces the joint into forced flexion. Mallet finger usually involves the long ring and the small fingers of the dominant hand. The injury typically occurs from playing ball sports such as baseball, football, and volleyball. The patient is unable to straighten the DIP due to injury at the tendon insertion. The finger is flexed. Patient is unable to do active DIP extension. The finger is bent in hyperflexion and looks like a mallet due to disruption of the terminal part of the extensor tendon from its insertion into the distal pharynx and the patient is unable to straighten the DIP joint. The injury can occur as an avulsion fracture, a bony injury, or purely a tendon injury. An X-ray may show avulsion of the distal pharynx or a large bony fracture with subluxation of the joint. If the fracture is large, there might be a volar subluxation of the distal pharynx. Treatment. Extension splint of the DIP only for about six weeks or more is the usual treatment. Acute injuries with minimal displacement and no joint subluxation are treated with extension splinting of the DIP joint for six to eight weeks. You need to keep the splint for 24 hours daily. The splinting can be volar splinting or it can be dorsal splinting. Allow the PIP to move freely in flexion and extension. After six weeks of splinting, night splinting may be needed for longer periods. It appears that supplemental night splinting after full-time splinting treatment is controversial. It may not really improve the outcome. Wearing the splint may not be liked by professionals such as doctors, hairdressers, dentists, and they may desire the surgery of percutaneous pin fixation. Conservative treatment can be tried even if the treatment is delayed up to four weeks with low long-term complication rates. There is an increased complication rate with surgical treatment. How about surgery? 
The goal is to keep the DIP extended until the bone or the tendon heals. K-wire utilization is a very common technique. What are the indications for surgery? Volar subluxation of the distal pharynx? Avulsion fracture with a large joint fragment, more than 50%? Some people think that 30% of articular involvement is an indication for surgery. Some orthopedic surgeons will continue to treat this injury by closed means, by splint, even if there is a volar subluxation of the joint. The rationale is that a stiff finger that's treated by closed means is better than a stiff finger that is treated by surgery. A closed injury, with or without a small avulsion fracture, is different than a closed injury that involves a large fragment, more than 50% of the joint, or an injury that causes subluxation of the DIP joint. Mallet finger with subluxation of the DIP joint is clearly an indication for surgery. It may require open or closed reduction and pinning of the fracture or the joint. A single pin is usually sufficient for the treatment of a purely tendon injury. When pinning a purely tendon injury, make sure you mark the affected finger on the dorsal aspect and also the volar aspect preoperatively because the x-ray will not show any evidence of injury. This will help you to avoid pinning the wrong finger. The finger position will change if the finger is pinned with the palm down or the palm up. Here is another method for pinning a mallet finger with a fracture. It's called the blocking percutaneous pin. The extension block pinning technique. Flex the DIP and insert the K-wire from distal to proximal direction. The K-wire is passed dorsal to the bony fragment and through the extensor tendon into the middle pharynx. Then extend the DIP and the K-wire will help in buttressing and reducing the fracture with extension of the DIP. Keep the DIP extended by fixing it with another wire. Long-term result of surgery. After the surgery, the patient may experience an extensor lag but without functional deficit. What are the complications of mallet finger? A residual deformity that usually does not affect the function. Or swan neck deformity. Care must be taken during treatment to avoid this deformity. The PIP should be moving freely in extension and flexion to avoid this deformity. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.